This is Jonathan Agnew here for Pro Boxing Fans. I'm delighted to be joined by the former super middleweight champion of the world, George St. Groves. Terence Crawford, Sean Porter is on Sky Sports on November 20th. How do you see the fight going? Uh, I see Crawford, Crawford winning. You know, it might be... It might take it might take a couple of rounds for the fight to settle, especially Porter can be a, you know he punches from his ankles at times. He you know he loses his footing, but he's so, such a powerhouse fighter um, that it might take a little while to settle and, and find the range for each fighter. But I think Crawford is a class act, just a genuine, genuine class act. You know, I remember seeing him fight over in the UK against Ricky Burns at lightweight. You know he's phenomenal. He's gone up to welterweight and he's competing with the likes of. Sean Porter and well, you know, he's, the, he's probably the better, he is the best, if not, the argument's there for him and Spence, but the best for a lot of people, best world weight in the world, uh, and, and I say Porter. I spar Porter as an amateur in Texas, like going back oh, 15, 15 years, probably close to 20 years ago, do you know what I mean? Like he was in the Junior Olympics in te Texas, I was a middleweight, he was like a, a light middleweight, and he was a handful back then as well, and I tried to put him in his place, I mean I didn't have a lot of skill then, just a lot of brute force. Um, I tried to bash him into his box, but he wasn't having any of it, and he was swinging back at me. Um, I remember then meeting his dad, who was his trainer, and Sean kept, you know, kept an eye on him as, as, as years went by. We boxed on a, on a, we boxed on a car together in, in San Jose, in, in uh, California as well. And um, yeah, just to see that guy come, almost come down in weight to get down the world away, and Crawford come up from lightweight. Um, it's bizarre, but. Do you have anyone else you've sparred that people might not have expected? Uh, I think, and I might be wrong, I had a gym bout with Kevin Mitchell which, when I was about 10 years old. I remember, I, 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 I was a big kid, do you know what I mean? I was like a featherweight, went in schools at featherweight, and I think I was a lot bigger than, 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 than this, 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 little, this little dude from West Ham who... It was a really good fighter who could whack a bit. And I, maybe someone will correct me and go now or someone else, but I think it was years later I puzzled it together and thought, I think that might be Kevin Mitchell. So he definitely hit me with a big, big left hook, and that was, that was one of Mitchell's punches back in the day, I'm sure it was. So he went on to win an ABA title and, and have a successful pro career as well. And as a trainer. I'm not even sure I've spoken to Kevin about that. So I, I, I need the proof, but uh, we might have to try and tie, tie it in. But yeah, that's the best I can get off the top of my head. We'll take that. And this is just a two part question. Canelo Alvarez fighting Caleb Plant uh, in a couple of weeks. How do you see the fight going, number one? And number two, how would George Groves have approached that fight? I spoke to Cole uh, last week and he, he says I would have backed myself to beat him. How would, how would, how would you have done? Well, I'll answer part one first. Uh, part one, I mean, we saw him at the press conference. He's, he's, Canelo's given away a lot of size. You know, I mean, he's got, a, got an enormous neck. You know, he's, he's a little powerhouse dude now, um, but he's given away a lot of height and reach. Um, Caleb Plant tried to hit him with a check, a check left hook, slap, sort of open hand scratch, and they both got a little nick, and nothing was really said. And first of all, it's like, why have you done that against Alvarez, who's who's He's a pocket rocket at the moment, like height-wise, and he's and he's very elusive with the upper body. But maybe that was just his little measuring stick for the rest of his camp. He's like, oh yeah, I know exactly how far away he is now with that lead left hook. I can't see many lead left hooks coming out in the fight. Um, but I definitely believe that this will be his toughest test to date at Super Middleweight. I'm not saying I think um, Alvarez is going to get beat. He's definitely the favourite, and I think he will beat um, Blanc. But, uh, much like I said about Joshua, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, you know, a surprise on the card. Uh, he's a big, tall, strong, fast, elusive fighter in um, Caleb Plant. He showed that he's got a bit of power now since he's won the belt in IBF uh, and he's, de he's defended it. And he's not unstoppable. Uh, Canelo, you know, Alvarez. If you go back to the second part of the question, how would I beat him? When I was I was WBA world champion a few years ago and no one was calling for a, for an Alvarez fight for me, you know, uh, since I've retired and he's come up to middleweight. Now if I said, oh, I would have beat him, I would have bashed him up, put him in his pocket, people are laughing at me, but um, you've got to have a good jab to beat Alvarez, you know. Uh, I say he's got solid solid foundation from the waist down, fantastic upper body movement. I mean, I'm in the gym on a Sunday morning training the amateur kids talking about Alvarez. Like, that's I do look up to him, but in that respect, I rate him. But 
you got to jam to the head, you got to jam to the chest, you got to put him in his place. He's not going to be able to dive in with mad uppercuts against, you know, the style of fighting that I'm going to put up against him, but they're all hypotheticals. Uh, we live in the, in, the, in the realm of uh, video games. Hopefully I get a fair shake when they make the, the next video game and they, they stick to my attributes. Uh, I'd, I'd like to think of Ice him, but he's got a good chin. Maybe not, but I'd be one points for sure. George, really appreciate your time. I know there's people waiting. Um, just lastly, talk us through your, your work with the Dale Youth. I believe you're there every Sunday. Yeah, I try and get down the amateur gym on a Sunday. I missed last week, I was away. Um, but this time I'll be in there tomorrow morning. Uh, trying to get down Sunday morning. We've got some prospects coming through, some real talented lads. Okay. And I'm in there just to um, sort out the, what's the expression, the, the week from the chaff. I want to see who, who's got it who ain't. I follow them up, they go through the hill runs around, uh, around Notting Hill. Uh, see who's putting it in and then getting back in the gym and make sure they're uh, trying to take some good foundations. But Mick Delaney, my old amateur coach, he's still in there producing champions. I'm just in there to learn from him. Happily retired, no chance of a comeback? Absolutely not. I'm 33 years old, I've still got it, but I don't want it. Appreciate it, George. Tom, man. <laughs>